In today's video, I was challenged with building a robotic arm in a few hours before an event, and let's just say the building process was quite eventful in itself. The objective was to build a robotic arm which could be controlled with joysticks and could use rechargeable batteries to power it so it didn't need to be plugged in during the presentation. Let's get right into it. With the time limit, it was apparent that there was no way I could design the robotic arm then fabricate it either by laser cutting or 3D printing as I don't even have a 3D printer. Pain. But I had a last result, which was a 4 degree of freedom robotic arm which I could buy and I had used quite a while ago and it fits for the aim of demonstrating simple controls of a robotic arm. Now someone might ask what DOF, which is degrees of freedom means, and this defines the freedom of movement of the parts of a robot. It is the number of independent movements performed by the robot in three dimensional space, forward, back, left, right, up, down, roll, pitch, and yaw. These movements allow a robot to be able to move in space and to also orient itself. The movements of robots are limited by the degrees of freedom and the lack or presence of constraints in their motion. The types of joint of the robot also affect this from linear to revolute to spherical joints. Moving on from that, the simple objectives were the following. The robot arm was to be controlled with two joysticks, it must be able to run on battery power and I, was, I needed to finish it before the day ended, that was the day prior to the event. So go ahead and comment whether you think I got it completed in time or not before finding out. The race against time began and before arriving at my work area, I got the components which I would need including the 4 degree of freedom robotic arm. As I stated earlier on, I proceeded to start assembling the arm and let me tell you this robotic arm is probably one of the most annoying things on the planet that I have come across in assembling. It's competing with the Wi-Fi module saga I had in an older project, which was an RFID attendance system using Arduino and Firebase database. You can check that out, I'll pin it up. Now you guys might ask why it's annoying to assemble. There's a couple of reasons for me. One, it's fragile and easy to break. While just trying to separate the cut parts and most of the time it comes with no instructions. This time especially, it came with none. None at all. If you recall, I earlier said I had made one of these before and that just made it worse. Using the older model, I ran into more issues assembling it simply because they look the same but they have some differences and I didn't know at all. After using two YouTube videos and wasting hours of my life going back and forth disassembling this thing, raging and raging and raging, with just being overall tired as I was going later and later into the night, I was able to assemble it with the servo motors in place properly. And mind you, if you're assembling this kit, you should watch out for servo positioning a lot. And if you are interested in building content like this, please consider leaving a like, subscribing and sharing. It would also mean a lot. You can also check out in the previous video where I built a solar tracking system and I explained a bit about server control, so I'll pin that up also. After the several hours spent assembling something so simple and figuring out that the new claw design is completely different from the old one, I was also able to get that part assembled as I needed to next deal with the electronics and programming. And I failed, technically. 
I was basically sewn off from the rush and time limit as I was building till early hours of the morning because I started building late. But fear not, it's not the end as I was able to continue the next morning although all that was left by the event was to upload the program. The structure was able to suffice as a form of display. For the electronics, I used Arduino as a microcontroller and the joysticks for controlling the robot. The joysticks were connected to the corresponding analog pins based on the circuit diagram and joystick function just like a potentiometer but capable of reporting movements in the x and y axis which is what we exactly needed. Each joystick can provide us with two axes and we are using two of them allowing us to have four inputs from the joystick which would be responsible for controlling the four degrees of freedom done by the four servos. As for the power supply, I went with two 18650 lithium polymer batteries rated at 3.7 volts at 3000 mAh. The servo motors require a stable 5 volt input, therefore to operate it I used the power supply module that allowed me to get 5 volt output from the servo and from the two batteries which are connected in series, they produce 7.4 volts. The 7.4 volts is fed directly to the Arduino as it can handle it. With all of the components connected properly, I proceeded to write the code and develop the control for the robotic arm. Here's the explanation of the code. We have the include servo.h library which is the library that allows us to control our servo motors. The servo objects are created for the servo motors and then the integers that are going to hold the value of the degrees that they are going to be moving towards is also created Then they are given a default value of 90 degrees. The joysticks have their inputs defined which are the analog inputs defined and from proceeding from there we have the void setup which contains the several objects and attaching them to digital pins where they are going to be controlled from. Now in the void loop, the loop goes like this. The joystick values are read from the joystick and then the conditional statement is activated. So if a joystick moves past a certain value, the servo position value is going to either increase or decrease based on the movement of the joysticks, which you can see if left underscore joystick x value less than 340, y underscore axis underscore degree minus equals to 5, and else if left underscore joy ax joystick x value greater than 680 degrees or 680, y underscore axis underscore degree plus equals to 5. So you can see the control system for increasing and decreasing the value of the servo position taking that in respect to the joystick. So that goes on and then we also have just to confirm the serial printing of the axis degrees to the serial monitor and then the writing of those values to the different servo objects and that is how the code functions. This isn't actually part of the code, this is a duplication of the code. But yeah, that is everything about the code that is functioning on the Arduino and how it works. Although it was completed after the event, you tell me in the details, did I succeed or fail? Because I was able to get the whole frame running and functional before the event but not any code and completed electronics before the event. And mind you, it was an impromptu project so cut me some slack. So here's the robotic arm being tested. Also, as you can see in some clips, because there isn't any clear mean and max value for the arm at times, the servos overshoot the range of motion attempting to reach the position it's instructed to go to but the frame doesn't allow it. This also applies to what I was explaining about the degrees of freedom and the lack of presence of constraints in the motion of the parts of the robot. If you made it this far, I want to say thank you and if you're not subscribed, what are you waiting for? Please just drop a like and comment on future build videos you would like to see. See you in the next one.